Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to this QCT tutorial. Today we are going to be following along with this PDF created by Janet George on how to stitch a nested pantograph design on your quilt. So you can follow along with this PDF, come and download it at leahday.com slash QCT help. And I am going to be stitching this out on a baby quilt and I got it from start to finish on this tutorial. So we're going to learn how to set up these rows, how to do a partial row at the beginning, how to nest those rows together really nicely, and how to do a partial row at the end. So let's get started learning how to quilt nested pantographs together. So now let's have some fun doing a nested pantograph using Quilter's Creative Touch 5 beginnings. So I'm going to click on the pantograph button here and the very first thing is to set my safe area. So I'm going to wheel the machine over and I'm going to take it all the way over here so where I am off the edge of the quilt and in the batting area just a bit. So this lets my machine know and the software know that this area uh, is how big we can possibly make the pantograph. So I'm going to tap that top left button and now I'm going to wheel it back over and off the edge of the batting this way and as far forward close to my front rail as I can go and I'm going to tap the bottom right button and that sets the safe area so that way my machine knows the software knows how much space we have to quilt in. So once that safe area is set, that's telling our machine and the software just how big we can possibly quilt, how much space we have to work with. And that is gonna come down here immediately with your total width and total height. Now these numbers are going to change a little bit in the next screen, the next step that we do, but I just wanted to talk really briefly about a few things that we can work with right here. If you ever make a mistake in your design, you've got an undo and a redo button right here at the top. Uh, so that little kind of going backwards blue arrow is undo and then going forwards little arrow is redo. If you ever want to reset the design to kind of its standard specs, you can hit reset. And if you ever want to clear a design completely, just delete it out of this screen, just hit the X button. Okay, so the next step is to determine the size of our panto and get started by marking the center point. We're gonna do that by hitting this ruler. So this is gonna connect in and you'll see that we have this nice big ruler down here. And you might be wondering, why do we select this again after we set our safe area? Where our safe area is bigger than our quilt. It's off into the batting area. This area is setting the size of the panto we actually want to quilt. So this would be if you are wanting to um, maybe fold your binding up and over the edge of your quilt, then you would maybe want to be a quarter inch inside the edge of the quilt. Just an example, I'm going to move my machine just to show you. Here I have a ruler foot on and I can visually see I am right on the edge of the quilt with my ruler foot, which means my needle would be a quarter inch inside. So this is something that you might want to set here if you don't want to stitch all the way to the edge of your quilt or off into the batting area. This is something that you want to set right now. So what we're going to do first is roll the machine over and I'm going to be clicking this button first. So I'm going to roll the machine over and where do I want to start? I want to start about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So I'm making sure that my ruler foot here is slightly off the edge of the quilt. That's where I want to be. That's where I think it's going to look best. And I also want to be about an eighth of an inch from the top too. You need to be thinking about where this is in relation to the top edge of the quilt. So yeah, I'm about an eighth of an inch where the needle, if the needle went into the down position right now, it'd be about an eighth of an inch from that raw edge of the quilt. I'm gonna hit that first button that I showed you. All right, now I'm gonna come over. What this is doing is this is setting the width of the design. You don't have to stay in a straight line. So I'm slightly crooked here. You know, I've come down a, a good bit. This is just a convenient spot for me to be in. And one really important note, guys, is don't put pressure on your rails. Uh, so here is my front rail, and you can see if I really push on that, that can that can make a big difference on how much uh, how much how big my quilt is, and it can also make a difference on 
where my needle is going to land. So if I am putting a lot of pressure here and reaching way into my frame, then that can distort things. So I want to be careful about that. So here we go. I like that placement. And then now I'm going to hit the right button. Okay, so back when we had QCT4, we would hit the apply measurement button at this stage. So this is something a little different for QCT5. We are instead going to hit this button. What does this do? This is gonna move your machine into the midpoint between these two points right in the middle and we're gonna mark that spot. So let's go. I'm gonna hang onto my top thread. I'm gonna hit that button. You're gonna hear it click in and now we're gonna go for a ride. And it says, please ensure the needle is up to make sure we're not gonna snap a needle off as it starts moving. So now you can see the machine has moved to the center of the quilt. This is the center point of those points you just set using these two buttons. Now, if you have a change of heart and you decide that you really don't like that, uh, maybe it's supposed to line up with something on your quilt and it's not lining up just right, well then you can release your carriage just by clicking that button and then go back and reset your points. So this time, you know, I had a change of heart. I think I actually want to stitch off a quarter of an inch outside of my quilt and I want to maybe go a quarter of an inch above too. So just to change a heart, you know, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to tap that first button. I just tapped that button to select my left side. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here and tap that second button to select the right side. And then I'll generally move the machine into more or less the center position and hit that black sewing machine button. And then now it's going to move and you'll probably see it's gonna move and be in a slightly different position because I expanded the spacing. So there it moved into the center position. I'll mark that. And you also wanna mark the horizontal too. You could use a piece of tape, uh, probably wouldn't use a pen or anything. You might get caught in it but I'm just gonna remember that I'm about a quarter of an inch above this mark on the edge of the quilt. I'm pretty happy with that, that looks great. Okay, so we are gonna be using this later. You don't necessarily need to worry about it a whole bunch right this second. So what you do need to worry about is hitting this button, apply measurement. So we're gonna hit that. Okay, so now that that measurement has been applied, you can see this has changed the total width of the quilt a little bit. It was before 39, I think, and now it's shrunk down to 37. So that is an accurate representation of how wide your pantograph design is going to be. Now, your total height, this is something that is gonna be different between the pro version of the software and the beginnings version of the software. Your total height in the pro version can be the total height of your quilt. But if I try and plug that in, I have, it's a 37 inch, square quilt, as you'll see, this input will be clipped to the upper limit of 14.9. Basically, in the beginnings version of the software, you can only do the height of two rows. And this is limited by the amount of space you have to quilt in on your frame with your machine. Now you might be wondering, I'm quilting on a 21, a Cunique 21, shouldn't I be able to quilt 21 inches here? And the answer is no, because as your quilt builds up on the back rail of your machine, it takes up more and more space, and that is gonna limit the amount of space you have to quilt in. You don't wanna start with a pantograph using up the maximum amount of space that you have, and then as you get to the end of the quilt, you have less and less space here, and that's going to end up hitting the back of your foot and causing some problems. So the software knows that, and that's why it sets it uh, and limits the total height of one or two rows to that number. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we are gonna change this total height to nine and hit okay. And now we're gonna go and select a pattern and we wanna go into the continuous line designs. It already is selected, so we are gonna pick one of these and we are gonna pick the shamrocks design. 
So just use these arrows to dial down and this is the design we're going to stitch, shamrock and leaves, and I'll click open. So I'd already been playing with my rows a bit, so I'm gonna dial that back down so we only have one pattern and one row. And you might wanna just be able to see how big this is on your quilt. It looks really huge, but it's kinda of hard to understand what that is in relation to the actual quilt. So we're gonna to go to options up here and we're gonna click on show grid and then okay. And this grid, the squares in the grid represent one inch each. So this should be basically nine squares long and 37.371 wide. And that will give you a good perspective on the size of the design and the amount of space left open. Basically how complex it will be on your quilts. Now for this tutorial, we're gonna use two rows. So I'll dial that back up and you can just do plus or minus here. Of course, keep in mind with the beginnings version of the software, you are limited to two rows. That's as many as you can work with. But the number of patterns is not limited. You can add more patterns until you feel like it looks good. So we're gonna keep going up into three and I think that's looking pretty good. You know, in a case like this, what I would be looking for is that the shamrocks are kind of a squarish or roundish shape that they're not elongated. Like, you know, I'll keep adding more and you can see they kind of start looking squished that way. And then if I take away more patterns, they start looking stretched out that way. So this is really just a visual thing. When it starts looking good to you, that's when you know to stop. Okay, so now we have two rows with three patterns each. And we have a few choices about how these actually connect together. And this is controlled by this section here. So I'm gonna just read directly from the tutorial from the PDF so that way you understand what each of these do. So this is from page five. The three rows of hearts at the bottom of the screen will allow choices for how designs will nest horizontally across the screen. As each is selected, a description will show at the bottom of the heart blocks. Try touching all the options for different looks with one or two rows selected. So right now I have both rows selected so that when I'm changing things, it's changing both rows, okay? Now, if I wanted to select only one row, I would come here and this is gonna unselect the rows. Now, let's say I wanted to select the top row I would just tap on it, that's the top row selected. I could change that by just playing with these buttons here, right? And then if I wanted to select the bottom row, I could then play with it individually. So you can see here now I have both of them selected and they both have the same. They have the little button here in the middle and this is called nest ends. And what that basically means is a little bit of the design is being snipped off and then nested over here. And that's bringing those designs together to make sure that the start and end points are the same place. And one thing to note is the pink. You can see that those pink lines, that is basically what's getting cut off over here to wrap around over here. So that is how that is working. Now, if we wanted to remove the gutter between the two rows, this is the kind of the space here between them and bring them closer together so that they better nest, what you'll wanna do is play with this fit button. Uh, not, not the star, I'll tell you what the star does in just a second. We wanna dial that fit button down so that the bottom circle is selected. And what that means is that's gonna allow them to come together and remove that without actually changing the total height of the pattern of the of the rows. Now, if you have this button selected, you don't want that. And the reason is it's going to take basically anything that gets cut off from the bottom and wrap it to the top. We don't want that for this particular pantograph we're working with. So now that we have that fit section selected, we're gonna hit size. And we need to look over here to our step size. This is the amount that we're actually gonna be changing and moving the design. So I'm gonna change this to small. There we go. And then touch the icon here to increase the vertical height of the design directly under the word max. So here I'm gonna just dial this up and you can see that's bringing those lines together so that they're nesting tighter together. Something like that. You can see how that row is now 
almost overlapping slightly into the row above. That line straight down the center is what's indicating that. So I think that's really cool. You can see how that's gonna bring those tighter and closer together. And you can change how much this changes by changing your step size. So let's say I wanted just a little bit more than I could do a tiny. And you can see how much control I have over that. I can just dial that very slightly, very, very small little movements there to just bring those ever so slightly together. If you have jumbo set, let's just say there's big and then there's jumbo, that makes a big difference. <laughs> so yeah, be careful about that. If you ever hit a button, it's like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Always check your step sizes. And that's gonna tell you a lot about how much movement you are doing on your pantograph with any given click. All right, and then if you ever wanna go back to the way it was originally, just hit that max button. That's gonna max out the size of the pantograph for the row height, for your total height divided by the number of rows, so it's nine divided by two is 4.5. So that max basically kind of resets your pantograph back to that width. And if you ever want to zoom in on the design and see it just a bit better, maybe you're wanting to check the distance between something, well then you can use this magnifying glass here at the top and dial in. I'm just hitting the plus button and that's allowing me to see just how close this is together. Like right now I'd say this is an average of about an inch apart. So from that clover leaf to that clover leaf, it's a roundup, it's a little bit less than an inch of space left open. And then if I want to shrink that, then I have my step size to small, then I can hit this button and I can see that's shrinking that down to about a half of an inch. So at any point, if you want to go back to the regular view of the design, you're gonna click that fit button that's gonna fit it back into shape and then hit the X to get out of your magnifying glass. So that will return us to this view and I am super happy with this. This is a perfect nested panto and nested meaning that this row is kind of bleeding into this row. We have a center line here down the middle of our two rows and you can kind of see that this is nesting into and overlapping and this one's kind of overlapping into that one. That is going to change how we place the design on our quilts, how we advance it through the, the, through the frame, but that's okay. This is exactly what we want for this tutorial. So now I'm gonna click on the save button and I'm gonna go into patterns. I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this folder working pantos. And you want to save it at this stage. So <laughs> working pantex. <laughs> there we go, working pantos. So there is my folder. I'm going to double tap on that. And then I will save this file name as shamrock. There we go. Enter. And save. So what this is gonna save by saving it is your pattern height, how you nested it, the number of patterns, how it's all connected together nicely. It is not going to work as far as your safe area, you know, your width of your quilt, that might change. But if you were basically working on the same size of quilt over and over and over again, well, this could be really, really useful. Now, one more thing we need to take into account before we start quilting, and that is the top row and the bottom row of this pantograph on the quilt. Basically, I know my quilt is 37 inches long, and I know this isn't gonna divide evenly into that. Uh, I'm gonna end up with a really tiny sliver of the design probably along the bottom edge, and I don't really like that. Now, I need to select this so that that fit mode is with the circle at the top, and then now I can dial this up. And I think I wanna just go maybe about halfway up. So that way I have a partial row at the top, a full row next, and that way I know that this is going to look nice on my quilt. So whatever happens at the bottom, whether it's a little sliver or it's a nice chunk of the design, it's gonna look consistent. So that looks good to me. I'm happy with that. And now we're going to click Sew in Zones. 
Now you're immediately prompted to save this zone sewing session. Now we've already saved it. We've saved it as full rows. So we don't want to save this right now. So I'm going to click no, but I should add, if you are using a hoop frame, you should definitely have clicked yes, because a hoop frame works differently. I'm on a rolling rail frame on the continuum frame. So I'm going to say no there. All right. So the next screen is our quilting interface screen. If we want to see grid lines on this screen, what you want to do is hit your options button again and make sure that you have show grid selected right there. I'm going to hit OK and that's already selected. Now a few things that are going on right here. We have the red area and this was actually set with our safe area. But what we want to do is we're going to kind of get that set because you can see our whole design is kind of squished over into that right edge. So what we want to do is touch the zone manager. That's right there. Now it gives you this little warning and it's in bright yellow. So it seems really official. It says opening the zone manager allows you to select which zone to place. However, it will also reset the current placement of the patterns. Do you still wish to open the zone manager? I'm going to say yes. All right, so there's the zone manager. Okay, so this screen is really helping you set up your zones for quilting. And this is going to come into play a whole lot when you're quilting on the Q zone frame, the hoop frame specifically. But for a rolling rail frame, the basic thing you need to understand is you're going to be quilting this repeatedly on your quilt uh, and just basically advancing through each zone. And this is going to help you as far as setting up your placements and how much space you have to quilt in. So right here, we see we have one, uh, one zone and you can see the red box there. That is zone number one. Now this I found really confusing and I uh, talked to Janet a lot about it and she helped explain it for me. And finally, in a way that really made sense. Basically, we have a scale. With your width, it's of course 100% because you can quilt the entire width of the panto on a rolling rail frame. So it's always going to be 100. But for the height, this is what is limited by the quilt rolling up on the back bar of your machine, basically. Now, if you have a gliding rail, you could possibly go up to maybe 98% uh, on the Cunique 21, you're going to want this to be 95. On the 14 Plus or uh, 15R or 15 Pro, you're going to want this to be set at 90. You just tap on it and then change those amounts. And that is going to just amount, that's just a, a percentage to take into account how much that quilt is rolling up on the back rail of your machine. Now, if you know that your quilt is tiny, which I'm quilting a baby quilt, so I know it's tiny, I might feel comfortable going up to 98. And you can see once you change that percentage, that changes how much space you have to quilt in because it increases the overall size of your quiltable area, your safe zone. So now I've gone up to 15.37 and I think that's safe. Uh, you know, this is a 37 inch long baby quilt. That's okay. But if you know that you have a, let's say queen or king size quilt on your frame, you might want to dial this down to 90 just to take into account because you cannot quilt the full height of your quilt uh, because how much or, or how much space you have to quilt in because of how much that's going to roll up on the back bar. So that is how you set your uh, set height uh, percentage and set width. Uh, I have had some people asking why their quiltable area seems to have shrunk once QTC, QCT5 came out. And this is why most likely this setting needs to be updated for you. And another note is fiddling with this has absolutely no effect on your pantograph size. As you can see, even when I change this to 100, that doesn't change anything on this screen, nothing at all. So keep that in mind, fiddling with this, this just controls your quiltable area within the frame. And this is going to, I think, be very, very important when quilting on the Q-Zone hoop frame. And yes, I am planning on exploring that too, guys. Uh, but for now, let's just focus on quilting one zone at a time. And here I've, this is what I've got it set here for the Cunique 21 with 100% height 95. If I had the 14 plus 15R 15 Pro, 
then I would be setting that height to 90. So now let's talk about the settings we have over here. This is really going to help you uh, lay out the design on your quilt and get things centered up nicely. And this is, I think, the most essential thing, and that is zone placement center. And you see that little yellow dot in the center? Basically, whenever we used that black sewing machine icon, moved our machine to the center, and I marked the center point of my quilt right here, and I, and I got all that lined up, Basically, that is using that placement method to make sure that each row of the pantograph lines up. The other option is four points, zone placement four points. I have not experienced this yet, so I am gonna stick with zone placement center. I think that's a lot easier. Now we also have zone start position, so from left, and this is actually grayed out in beginnings. As you can see, I'm tapping it, nothing happens. Your only choice is to start from the left and go over. But we do have some choices down here, sewing direction continuous. We have sewing direction uniform. That means everything's gonna go from left to right, sewing direction back and forth, or sewing direction continuous. So what we wanna select is continuous. This means if you have created two rows, after the first row stitches from left to right, a straight line will be stitched down the far right edge of the quilt and begin stitching the second row from right to left. This is the placement used for this tutorial. This is what you want. So sewing direction continuous. And now we're gonna hit okay. So now we're gonna go into the settings menu and I like to set this to slow and have a tie off stitch count at two. I do the micro stitch. That means it makes tiny stitches at the beginning and end. You can also set that to back and forth but I really do prefer the micro stitch. I'm gonna uncheck the automatic bobbin pool and I am going to uncheck the pause at trim lines. So those two are removed for this particular tutorial. And then Janet has set it to 12 stitches per inch. There we go, let's do 12 and we'll just see what that looks like. I usually set mine to the highest. She likes hers a little lower. I'll go with her suggestions. Let's see what this is gonna look like. Uh, now, one thing to note, you can see the overall height and width based on what is coming in, and you can see the number of trims. We got 21 trims to deal with, so let's figure out how to sort that out next. So we're gonna sort out those trims by clicking Optimize, and this is going to help us remove those breaks. So if we touch Remove All, Basically what that's going to do is that's going to remove all of the breaks within the patterns. Now it's gonna ask, do you wanna connect the first and last points? I'm gonna say no, but if I clicked yes, basically that would connect the end point down here with the beginning point up here. I don't really wanna do that. So I'm gonna say no, and now I can click animate stitching and you can see how it's gonna stitch up all the way over and then all the way down and over this way. And this is a great way to check and make sure that the pantograph is gonna stitch out, not doing anything weird, you know, not stitch out half over here and then some over here and go all around and do something strange. So I really like to be able to check that. Another way you can check for breaks is if you select this button and then hit animate, then it will actually pause at each break and ask if you want to uh, delete it. And then it will ask if you wanna connect the first and last points again. I'm gonna say no. All right, I'm super happy with that. So I'm gonna hit okay. So now it's actually time to start stitching our pantograph. So I am gonna wheel my machine over and remember that point that we marked before. It feels like a million years ago, right? <laughs> So we mark this point, that is a super, super special point. And I'm lining my needle back up with where I was before. And then up here on the screen, I'm gonna hit this button. What this is doing is this is basically telling the machine that that is that point and to center everything up from there. So I wanna show you guys that one more time just so that you can see it. I basically move my machine back so that the needle is back in position where we had it set when the we hit that black sewing machine icon, it moved the machine here, I marked that point, okay? So all of that's lining up, and then I hit that green rectangle with the yellow dot in the center. 
Now you may get an alert that says out of safe area. Let me show you what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna push this back further. I'll hit that button again. No, oh, it seems to be doing okay. Up, oh, there it goes. It goes pink on the screen and it says out of safe area in red at the top. So what's the solution? Well, Janet has gone into a lot of detail in the PDF help file to kind of sort this out. You'll reset your safe area. You might shrink down the design or my solution is I just brought my foot in just ever so slightly towards the quilt. Okay, so I'm just bringing it in maybe an eighth of an inch, hit that button again, and now it's fine. So lots of different solutions there. Don't let that freak you out. Okay, so that is basically marking your center point and getting the design centered up on your quilt. And then now I'm gonna wheel it over here because I know this is generally where the quilting is gonna get started. And I'm going to set and pull my bobbin. So I'm just setting the pull bobbin button. You're gonna hear the carriage link in. It's gonna say, please ensure the needle is up. Our usual set of little warnings there. It's gonna roll over. And this is a good place to check yourself if you are, you know, kind of curious, you know, oh, where am I gonna get started? You know, and it is actually off the edge of the quilt by a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna take a single stitch. There we go. Now we disconnected the automatic bobbin pull, which is why I'm kind of getting thrown off. I can control this now. So I'm saying move away. And now it's going to give me that alert. Please ensure the needle is up. And here's another note, guys. You really ought to base down the edges of your quilt. Uh, it's something I've been getting in the habit from watching Janet's videos, and I did not do that today. And I'm probably gonna end up regretting it. So just keep that in mind. It's good to just run a basting stitch right along the edges just to get started. But I'm gonna go on ahead and get going, and we'll see if I can get around it. Let's hit sew. I say, please ensure the needle is up one more time. Now, this is gonna stitch out a partial row first. And that is going to just be taking into account the fact that my quilt did not divide evenly into nine inches of height. So it's going to stitch just a bit of that design and then we're gonna nest those rows together. And you can see how nicely it is cutting off the design it's taking into account, you know, everything above it is just basically being cut off and that's working out just fine. And I actually gotta say, I really like that 12 stitches per inch. That's not so bad. Although I do like and prefer smaller stitches. That has a nice look to it too. So that stitched out two beautiful rows and from now on, I will absolutely be stitching down the edges of the quilt. It is so easy for that to lip up on the edge and then getting your fingers in there to try and hold it down is downright dangerous. So I am always going to base down the edges of my quilts from now on when doing pantographs. I think that's super important. Okay, all right, here on the screen, I'm gonna click finished zone, proceed to next zone. Now, one thing I forgot just there was to break my thread at the end of that, which means that I got a nice long thread tail running through the length of my frame. That's not a deal breaker, obviously. I was able to clip it, but just a, a little quick note, at the end of your panto row, make sure to take the time to pull your bobbin thread and break thread. Now we are here on the marking spot, and this is how we're going to mark that center point down here. And this is gonna help us have a reference point for connecting and nesting these rows together. So my favorite way of doing this is to do a pull bobbin. So I just tap on that, and I take a single stitch. So it's gonna take a single stitch right there. I'm gonna tell it to move away. I'm gonna hang on to this top thread. The needle is up, so I'm gonna hit okay. And you have lots of different marking methods here. There's not just one, but I like to pull up my bobbin thread just like so, because that hole, that needle hole, is representing that point. So with that bobbin thread coming through there, I can then take my marking pencil and mark a nice big plus sign right on that spot. That's gonna be my plus sign. And I can also see that little dot, that little needle hole. 
and I'm gonna say continue and I'm gonna say continue and it's gonna give you a big giant warning <laughs> and you know what it's flashing <laughs> yellow and red it's a big deal not all the markers have in place are you absolutely sure you want to move to the next zone I'm gonna say yes definitely so our first two rows are quilted and ready to go. I did make a mistake. I did not pull my bobbin thread here at the end of the second row so that when the machine moved to the center point, I had this long thread tail through the entire thing. That's a waste of your bobbin thread. It's not really a big deal, but it did make me freak out just a little bit because, you know, it just like, oh, I meant to do that and I didn't do it. So understand even I make mistakes like that and kind of get caught off guard. Um, but it's not a big deal because I was able to break that thread and it was in the batting area So I was able to clip it short and then I marked the spot now if you were doing a non nested panto a panto in which Basically each design is fitted into its own row and they're not overlapping each other at all Well, then that style of panto you're only going to need to worry about that particular mark You don't need to worry about anything else and that's the method I've used so far and I find it very very easy to understand Basically so long as you can line up with that reference point you're going to be good to go but we're doing a nested panto and we shifted forward so that way that top design, that top row was a partial row. So our next row is gonna be just a little bit tricky to line up. We are gonna be using that mark, but we're gonna take a ruler and measure up from it. So that way we can lock those two rows together so that way they're nested consistently. So that way, you know, when you look at the quilt, Basically, the distance between each row stays the same, and you're not gonna end up with a big wide gap between row two and three. So this is gonna be the tricky part of this tutorial. I'm gonna try and explain it as clearly as I can, but I can tell you, even to me, this is kind of a little bit mind bendy, and I'm still learning as I learn along with you guys. So let's get started. I'm going to advance the quilt just a little bit, so that way I have my full nine inches. I'm sure I have a full nine inches to work in here and then we'll get back on track. So I took the time to stitch down the sides of my quilt as well as advance it so it is ready to go and then now what we're going to do is we are actually going to x out of here. This is going to return us to this screen and what we're going to do is go to select pattern and we're going to go back to this is the uh, patterns working pantos that's my shamrock design we saved that earlier this is why this is coming back now as a pantograph and as you can see now it's open back up again and it is back to our full nested design looks great we have two full rows and now we're going to click sew in zones of course, it's gonna give you that little alert again. Do you wanna save it? We're gonna say no, because we've already saved it before. That's what we're working with. And then we're back to this screen again. So we're gonna repeat the step to optimize. That's gonna deal with these side breaks. And I'm gonna show you this one this time, check for breaks and then animate stitching. And what it's gonna do is it's going to, as it bumps into each break, it's gonna ask you this, do you wanna remove this break? I'm gonna say yes. It's gonna stitch all the way across and then down and I'm gonna say yes, yes. It's gonna go all the way back over here and I think I'll have one more break, yep. And no, I don't wanna connect the first and last point so I'll say no to that one. So I can animate stitching again, uncheck, check for breaks and click animate stitching again and you can see the whole thing is number one, the whole thing is one long piece. So that's a great way of checking to make sure that your pantograph is going to stitch without breaks because those can be just a little bit of annoyance as you're stitching your design. So I'm going to hit OK and this is going to go back to this screen and what we're going to do is we're going to click that green button, this big green box. We're going to click that. It's going to link into the design and it's probably going to send up an alert here as you can see saying that it's out of the safe area and the reason was I wasn't on the right spot. I need to get back on that spot where my needle is lined up with my check mark. I'm going to get back to that point. I'm going to hit that button again and so that's going to pop up. Now we're in the safe zone but we've got a problem. As you can see 
if I'm referencing this point, you can see the top of my shamrock is right here. And on the actual quilt, I'm about two inches from this line of stitching. That's not really where I wanna be. I wanna be closer in. So that way, the top of that shamrock, if we look back here at the distance between the first two rows, we had a half of an inch between that line of stitching and the top of that shamrock. I know that next shamrock is gonna be coming in and it's going to be running along the top of this row. So I really wanna be about a half of an inch down. That means what we're gonna do basically, it, this is a little bit of eyeballing, but I think that it definitely does make sense. Basically, if we were doing non-nested pantos and we didn't do the partial row, this would be where we are lining up. But because we did the partial row at the beginning and we're doing nested, we wanna measure up from there. And I'm gonna actually grab a ruler to get this exactly right. So back here you can see it's a little bit of an angle, but I've got dead set, I'd say half of an inch between that line of stitching and the top of my shamrock there. Well, this is the same corresponding line of stitching. So I want that to be lined up nice and straight with that ruler. And I can also line up with the seam line there on my quilt and move my foot back. Now I've got that, <laughs> I've got a ruler foot on. So I have got to keep in mind that that is adding a quarter inch to where I place my foot. So I'm going to bump this up now and that's gonna allow me to slide that back. So basically what I'm doing is I am lining up quarter inch over here with that line of stitching where I know it's gonna connect with my shamrock. I've got an extra quarter inch here on my foot because I've got a big bulky ruler foot here on the machine, but my needle is what's important is my needle is going to end up a half of an inch. It's gonna end up in the right spot, a half of an inch from that previous line of stitching. All right. And it looks like I am dead set with the needle lining up in the center. You can see that's where that line is. I want it to be in the center. I'm going to hit that green box again. And that just bumped it up. It just shifted the whole thing up. And now what we can do to test it is we can trace. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to roll the machine over. And what I'm going to be looking for as I trace this is I'm gonna be looking for how high this comes in because I'm gonna have a shamrock here and I should be looking for and see about a half of an inch spacing between those two lines. Needle is up and you just hit the trace button and this is gonna allow you to see exactly how that design's gonna stitch. So first it's gonna go down, do this kind of lower area first. And you can see how fast it moves too, which is very nice. So I have a little bit of a blip. Now it's starting on my shamrock. So it's gonna come up and now it's bumping around for the leaves. So I'm looking at this foot. I want there to be about a half of an inch. Oh, that looks perfect. There should be another half of an inch. I'm putting like a finger distance there. That looks good. I'm super pleased with that. So you can always test yourself using that trace method. So I'm happy with my placement. It looks good. The tracing looked good. So I'm gonna click pull bobbin gonna go into this screen. Uh, my needle is up. It's now gonna go to that starting point. Pull that thread up and now we'll hit sew. So I think the most confusing thing about nested pantos is using that center spot, using that marking and then measuring up from there. And so I'm gonna stitch out a few rows uh, just kind of gain a little bit more experience with this as far as description. And then I will meet you back here and we will talk through this all over again one more time just to make sure that this is as clear as it can possibly be. And as we stitch out this first shamrock, let's make sure that our spacing looks good. We're kind of comparing it to back here and seeing is that consistent? Look at that. That is so beautifully consistent. Look at that spacing there it looks the same. And that means that the pantograph is gonna look consistent all the way down the quilt.
so I have stitched out two full rows and then now I've advanced my quilt and I have advanced to the point where I could stitch along this bottom edge and go on ahead and do basically kind of a base down to get everything nice and stable. And this is a great idea. As I said, it was almost a little dangerous as I was trying to hold down the edge of the quilt while it was stitching the panto. That wasn't a good idea. And I think that this is a much safer option. So I'm gonna wheel the machine over to where the needle is about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I'm gonna to go to my red toolbox and down on the bottom of those tools is basting tool. I'm gonna to do a single stitch. It'll immediately take a single stitch for you. And then I'm gonna select slow base, but I'm gonna dial up to a speed of five. That's the fastest. And then it's gonna take a stitch about every second or so. You wanna be careful because this isn't dependent upon your movement. It's just dependent upon speed. So it's, you know, it's coming, the needle's coming down every second. So what you wanna do is just a slow movement and pause slow movement and pause. What you don't want to do is try and yank the machine around, which could potentially break a needle because it is a kind of a pause as the needle is in the down position inside the machine. So you, I, I'm kind of anticipating that needle drop is what I'm saying. I'm feeling for it. And then occasionally I'll take some small stitches, meaning I won't move as much, just really small quarter inch stitches. And that really works. And this is good for, you know, evening out fullness. As you can see, I'm working with a wool batting here and that wool batting is nice and puffy. And this is a good idea. <laughs> well, watch out for machine roll. As you can see, it just rolled back on me when I let go of it. And you kind of have to watch out for that. But fullness is an issue with wool battings, especially they tend to be extra fluffy. Um, and you might be wondering if this is going to cause issues as far as pleats and stuff. I find that with a basting stitch, you know, it's easy enough to pick out if I need to. And because we're not quilting it to death, it's quilted with the panto, it's really not going to have issues with, you know, such as a snow plow where that, you know, the stitching flattens out the quilt enough where it's coming and then overlapping this line of basting stitches. So now I'm going to click exit out of there and I want to explain one more time how to account for a nested panto using QCT5. So my mark came in whenever we use the marking tool after I did that row. That's a really important step. Don't miss it. Uh, that mark came in right here. Well, pretty much as I've gone through this and done a couple rows, I realized that where I'm lining up now with the full row going into a full row going into a full row, it's about a half of an inch up from that. Or I can line up and measure from my actual stitching on the pantograph itself. So either way, you can either measure up from that mark, which means that's bringing those rows closer together, or I can measure down from my actual stitching. Now, if you are doing a non-nested panto or a panto where you're actually expanding it, you're leaving some extra space, an extra gap between those lines, then you would measure down from that marked point. If you are doing a non-nested panto where the rows are just in their rows and they're not overlapping, they're not too big, you know, they're not stretching out bigger and you're not leaving a gap and you're not squeezing them in tighter and nesting them together, then you're just simply going to line up on that dot and that's all you have to do. That's the easier way of doing it. But I'm gonna show you exactly how I line up with my ruler. I'm gonna place this down. Keep in mind, whatever foot you are using, you're not lining up to the foot, you're lining up to the needle. So I think a ruler foot is actually fairly useful because it's just a dead set quarter inch. You can take that into account whenever you're doing this measurement. So I'm gonna line up with that mark and I'm putting a quarter inch on that because then I've got that extra quarter inch from my foot. So that is where I would line up and start. So I'm gonna just hold the machine there and then I'm gonna double check myself. It should also be a quarter inch from the stitching line of a previous row and that's in the right place too. So I think that this is solid, it's ready to go. I'm gonna line up my foot right here and then what button do you hit? you hit the big green box with the yellow dot at the top, that is telling the machine that is where that is going. You might see your design pop up a little bit. 
Now one other thing that you'll want to do, unless you want to have some really long threads or some breaks on your quilt, is you want to hit optimize again and remove all breaks and don't connect the first and last points. I don't know why it does that. It needs to be like refreshed and told to do that over and over and over again, but it does. So just keep that in mind. And then if you feel like, ah, uh, yeah, might be off a little bit on your, your spot, you can always hit that green box again, just to make sure you're still correct in the right spot. And again, uh, if you are just not quite sure, hit the trace button. It's right here that's gonna help you trace through the design. You'll be able to eyeball it and see if those lines are lining up just exactly right. Now I'm going to stitch out two more rows, one row across, one row down, and then it looks like I'm going to have just a little partial row at the very end. So meet you back here when we're ready to stitch that. So I stitched out my last set of full rows. I already broke my bobbin thread. I'm going to say finished, proceed to next zone. So what it's going to do is move back into the center position again. And again, we get this little pop-up screen where we can mark using whatever marking method. And there are actually three different marking methods here. You can sew an L, you can pull the bobbin and sew an L, or you can just take a single stitch. I like the single stitch. That really works for me. I'm gonna take that single stitch and then hit continue. And it says, are you sure all of the zone markers have been properly placed? I'm gonna say yes. Okay, and then I'm gonna release the carriage, or release the sewing machine just so that way I can move it around. And I have that thread pulled up from where I just pulled up. I did that single stitch, pulled up my bobbin, and I mark that with a plus sign. Now don't forget to do that step and mark that point because that is, again, the most important point about uh, getting the pantographs to line up nicely, whether you're doing nested, non-nested, just, you know, straight lace, putting them together. It doesn't matter. That is how you're lining everything up. That's how you're keeping the pantographs straight with the quilt and also lined up evenly. For a nested panto, I am gonna measure up from this point. In this particular case, it's gonna be a half of an inch because that's what I pretty much determined is what's working for my panto. So I'm gonna take my ruler, measure up a half of an inch and make a new mark, a new plus sign, a half of an inch above it. And that is gonna be where I line up my needle and I hit the big green box. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna line up my needle with that new plus sign that's a half of an inch above the one that the machine marked. Okay, right there, hit that box. And it's gonna go bright pink and look a little scary because of course it's a partial row. It is uh, coming down lower and it recognizes that. It recognizes that it's gonna go out of the safe zone. So I'm gonna click this button. This is our partial row button. Now it, says, it gives me a warning. It says the safe area clipping cannot be placed above the zone's top edge. I'm gonna say okay and see what it's doing, it's kinda, it's not really doing it right. So I think the solution in this particular case is I need to advance the quilt one more time. I am kinda right on the edge here, and so I'm gonna advance, and then I think that this is gonna sort itself out. So I advance the quilt through the frame, now I'm gonna line up with that point, the point that is a half of an inch above the machine point, I'm gonna click the green box, Okay, now the setting here, you wanna move the machine down to where you want the, lo the short stitch, the, uh, the bottom most stitch to go. So here I am a little bit off the edge of my quilt and I'm gonna hit that button. Let's see if this fixes it. There we go, that looks correct because you can see we've got the full design here. If we go up and just double check, I'm putting my needle back on that placement. That's a half of an inch above. I'm gonna hit that again and it didn't move. So I think that we're good. Now it is still giving me this pink warning and out of safe area. It's still saying all this scary stuff, but I think this is what it's designed to do. But you know, we can always test it by using that trace button. Before I wanna do that, I wanna hit optimize again and go ahead and remove all breaks. Don't wanna connect the first and last points, and I'll say okay. That's gonna take care of some breaks I was having on both sides. 
So now I'm tracing the design and checking how it's lining up. And one thing I'm gonna pay attention to is how far back this comes. It's gonna swing down and around and come up with the flower petals for the shamrock. And I want it to come no further than where my thumb is right now. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. So I'm gonna hit stop. Cause I'm pretty confident this is gonna stitch out correctly. And now I'm gonna hit pull bobbin. And now it's gonna move over to the start point. And I'll take a single stitch and then move away. There we go. And then now I'll hit sew. Perfect. So it's stitching just a little bit off the edge of the quilt, which is exactly what I wanted, but it's breaking that off and doing that partial row. And as you can see, this wasn't rocket science. It's a matter of you know, understanding that midpoint placing method of how things line up through the middle of the quilt. And just another note, make sure that as it's stitching out, you're not leaning on the rails. I was just catching myself leaning on the rail a little bit. You don't want to do that. So always be watching out for little things like that. But overall, I am delighted with how this has turned out. As you can see, this spacing is exactly consistent with what I have before, which means my entire pantograph over the entire quilt is beautifully consistent has the same spacing. You wouldn't know that this is stitched only two rows at a time. You wouldn't know that at all. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot. I know I certainly did. I am still in the process of learning how computer automation works on my long arm. And I gotta say a super special thank you to Janet George for putting together these PDFs. I found this super helpful. I don't think I would have been able to talk through this tutorial without Janet's help. So super thank you there. And please come and download these PDFs. They are very, very helpful. You can find them at leahday.com slash QCT help. And again, the one that you'll wanna download for this tutorial is the one on nested pantograph designs. So that is it for this video. If you'd like to learn more about QCT and adding automation to your long arm so it moves on its own, so it stitches out designs like this perfectly spaced, and it speeds up your quilting process, you can come and learn more about it at leahday.com QCT. This automation package is compatible with all Grace frames, the Grace Cunique, 15, 19, and 21, as well as some home sewing machines too. So come and check it out at leahday.com QCT. Until next time, let's go quilt.